Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. Still getting my teeth kicked in by this winter weather. It's great when it's 80 degrees one day, then down in the 30s the next day. It's just fantastic. It does wonderful stuff for your sinuses. So if I sound a bit weird and a bit off in this video, uh, as I've been sounding for the past week or so, that is why. But anyway, guys, today I'm bringing you guys my top five free premium ships list. So in this list video, I narrowed the list down to five premium ships that you can get free to you, meaning that you don't have to give any money to Wargaming to get these premium ships that are good for just everything. They're great for random battles farming. They're good and competitive. If you ever want to do ranked brawls, clan battles, cots, these are five ships that will do great in both of those scenarios. And again, they're free. You don't have to spend money to get them. Now, of course, some of these ships are for steel, coal, free XP, research bureaus, so you will have to put some time into getting them, but still, there's no money that needs to be handed over to Wargaming at the end of the day to get them. So that's what this list is about. Let's go ahead and get right on into it. And again, this is a list video. It's not an in-depth review of each ship. We're going to hit the strong points of each ship and talk about a couple of their downsides, so we're not going to get too deep into each one. I do have videos on most of these ships. If you want an in-depth breakdown, you can find those on my channel. But anyway, let's go ahead and get on into it, starting at number 5 with the Tier 10 Soviet cruiser, the Stalingrad, the original Russian biased ship. So, Stalingrad, this is one of the first rare ships that you could get in the game. Not, well, not, not really rare, but one that you had to dump a lot of time in the game to get. It's one of the first steel ships. So... Stalingrad, it's Stalingrad, you get nine 305mm guns with Soviet bias AP and Soviet shell ballistics. If you don't know the Soviet bias AP, when I refer to that, especially with the Stalingrad and the Soviet cruisers, the Soviet guns have such insane velocities, normally up where around the 900 meter a second range, that in most cases, anything you shoot with that, you'd overpin. But the Soviet fuses on the Soviet shells have very short fuse times, so you get good penetration and not that many overpins for what you should be getting with the velocities that these guns come out at. So these are some extremely hard-hitting guns on the Stalingrad and the other Soviet cruisers. On top of that, too, they get the flat shell arcs, which means that you don't have shells orbiting the Earth two or three times like you do with, for example, the uh, American cruisers and such so you get those excellent guns you get a 12 kilometer radar which is fantastic for a competitive of course and you get a very 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 strong very good armor layout for a cruiser especially in a bow and angled position stalingrad can be tankier than some comparable tier 10 battleships that's how tanky the ship is it's so tanky that in many cases in competitive this is essentially your second or third battleship depending upon your lineup for competitive for things like cots and clan battles and such now the ship isn't as tanky as she used to be unfortunately she lost a lot of that survivability in the commander rework and also when the heavy crew well the super heavy cruisers or the super cruisers were given the battleship burn time rather than the cruiser burn time that they used to have. So now Stalingrad burns for the 60 seconds of the battleships, which if any of you have played battleships, you guys know how incredibly long that feels like when it's just one fire, let alone two or three. So unfortunately, she's lost some survivability there. She's also quite squishy from the sides, as most Soviet large cruisers and battleships are. From the bow end, if you're shooting AP at the Stalingrad, unless you're shooting AP for something like Yamato, Shikishima, uh, Ohio, something with 18-inch guns, you're not really going to be doing too, too much to the Stalingrad. I mean, if you get through the armor, scheme you'll punch them a couple of times pretty darn hard but when you can just throw HC in the tubes and burn this thing down now it's not as good as it used to be in terms of survivability but still those 305 millimeter guns they are insanely accurate they hit hard they have very flat arcs this is still a very hard hitting ship that has lost a bit of its usability in clan battles and such and has been replaced in some cases with Petra Pavlos for the sheer tankiness of the Petra Pavlos, but it's still a very hard-hitting hard, hard hitting 
ship that will be used in competitive, although not as much as beforehand. Now, another big downside, too, is that this is a steel ship, so you either have to spend a, a fair amount of time grinding it in ranked clan battles or just absolutely burning through the snowflake event at the end of the year around Christmas time. And to the average Joe, this ship can take quite some time to get, but it is still a very good ship if it has lost a bit of its tankiness. And that's why it's down here at number five. It's still a ship that I would recommend you guys pick up for steel, but unfortunately it's not as insane as it was. Now, again, if you take a look back at Stalingrad, look at where it was versus where it is now. Um, yeah, it's still a very good ship. It was like absolute, just the embodiment of Soviet bias in the game before a lot of these changes that we saw to it. It got, it, it got its first direct nerf, um, I think two or three months ago when they started to dial down the time of its radar because with the new commander skills, you could get the radar up to like almost 40 seconds if you really wanted to build into it. But that, of course, has been changed. But still a very good ship and one that I would recommend you guys pick up for still eventually. All right, going on down to number four, we have the Tier 10 American Battleship, the Ohio. The Ohio was one of the first research bureau ships. And what the Ohio is, essentially, is a Montana hull, but instead of the 12 16-inch guns, she gets 8 18-inch guns of the 457 millimeter size. So they're not the 460s of the Yamato, so you can't overmatch 32 millimeters of armor, but you still gotta get that American AP. This thing slaps like a friggin' train. Anyone that's been on the receiving end of the Ohio knows how hard it hurts to get hit by this ship. And with those eight 18 inch guns, you also get very good secondaries if you want to build into them. Now, they're not German secondaries, you don't get German secondary pins, they're just the American five inch mounts. But they are quite accurate. They used to be a little bit more accurate. Well, actually, a lot more accurate before the Commander rework. The, these segments used to be absolutely laser accurate. But you still get a bunch of them. You still get a very, very, very good reload time on them. So they will be setting fires left, right, and center. And they will tear up any destroyers or light cruisers that do get in your secondary range. It also has a very good survivability because it gets the improved U.S. Battleship Hill and the American Damage Con that runs for 20 seconds. Now, if you don't know, when you pop Damage Con, of course, that's, that um, extinguishes any fire and stops any flooding that's going on in your ship. But it also, for the time that it runs, no fires or flooding will be able to get started on your ship. And for that full 20-second Damage Con time that the Ohio gets, that well, the American battleships get, no fires or flooding will be started, so that's a fantastic, fantastic thing to have, especially in the current meta, where we have a lot of rapid-fire HE spamming cruisers, and we are, in fact, getting another line of those with the Pan-Asian cruisers as well. She also has, of course, a very good AA, as it is almost the exact same AA complement that the Montana gets. Now, you can also build into the main battery accuracy with the ship as well, but the ship does have very floaty shells, as most American battleships do. So even when you do build into the accuracy, which you can do, and the guns are really darn consistent as American battleship guns are, it's just that the shells are so darn floaty, as we've seen in other American battleships, and you only get eight of them. So when your shells float in the air for 10 years getting to the target, and you only land two of eight shells, it is really frustrating, but still, those two shells that hit probably pack quite a punch. The ship is also fairly slow, too, at a 28 knots base top speed. You can't get that up to around 29 knots with the speed flag equipped. And this is a Research Bureau ship. So in order to even unlock the Research Bureau, you have to unlock five tier 10 ships in the first place, and then regrind seven lines, six if you get the boost, or some less depending upon if you got research bureau points in like a dockyard event or in daily missions or containers or whatever so it can be toned down a little bit but you do have to put a lot of effort into getting the ship but once you do get this ship this is quite uh, just an awesome battleship this ship is very useful and competitive uh, shoot last clan battle season ohio's were everywhere for cots too it's a very popular ship so it's a very good ship to pick up great in random battles great in competitive and one that is worth the grind but since it is again such a steep grind like the stalingrad she's back here at number four all right going on down now to number three we have the tier 10 soviet cruiser the Moskva, the original soviet cruiser 
So Masva is, in many cases, essentially a Stalingrad junior. She's a decent replacement for Stalingrad and competitive if you want something with pretty darn good guns. She's a really tough cruiser, not as tough as Stalingrad in the armor department, but Masva gets the original cruiser burn time. So she does not get that very long battleship burn time that the Stalingrad gets, and that's a huge pickup for the Masva, which was essentially a, almost a super cruiser before we even had super cruisers in game. Another advantage she has over Stalingrad is that she gets the same 12 kilometer radar as Stalingrad, but hers has a 30 second base runtime. And again, you can build into that with new commander skills and modules and such, and you can get that up even longer. So that's a very long time for Soviet radar. She also gets 9 220mm guns with a 10.4 second reload time, and she gets that Soviet bias AP as well, and she has good HE on top of that decent reload time as well, so she's great for dealing with DDs. Again, she has the, the flat shell arcs of the Soviet heavy cruisers, or well, the Soviet ships in general. Uh, good reload time, good HE, great for dealing with DDs. You know, not as good as like a small lens, but pretty darn good for being a heavy cruiser. And again, just like the Stalingrad and other large Soviet ships, her sides are very squishy, so you want to watch that. Um, but she plays essentially just like Stalingrad. You find an island, park next to it, keep your sides covered, keep your bow pointing toward the enemy, use your good AP when they show broadside, burn them down if they don't, and use your HE. And then she is a, a coal ship too, so she's much, much easier to obtain than Stalingrad or any research bureau or steel ship. And she's a darn good ship for competitive, a darn good ship for random battles farming as well. And one of my personal favorite ships in the game. And again, a lot easier to obtain than uh, any steel or research bureau ship since she is for coal. And that's just something you can get every day by doing your uh, daily shipments and choosing the more resources container, uh, doing certain combat missions, dockyard events. They, they give coal out a really, 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 really lot now. So you can easily get the ship, um, even for the average player, just by doing your daily uh, shipments. Shoot, I think the time is like uh, two months. And that's without doing anything extra on top. That's not doing ranked or the special game modes where they give away coal or... You can buy coal in the auction right now, but again, we're talking about um, free ships here. So it's a lot easier to get since she is a coal ship, and again, a darn good ship as well. All right, moving on down to number two, we have the French destroyer, the Marceau. So the Marceau is more of a side grade to the Colbert, the Techline Tier 10 French DD. So you're taking an already good DD and making it not necessarily better again it's more of a side grade you get smaller gun you get guns you get eight 127 millimeter millimeter guns with a 2.9 second reload time with the build on it and you get that french destroyer damage saturation mechanic where essentially the french dds take roughly half the amount of damage that normal dds do because they're ship compartments get damage saturated faster than normal dds and she's an extremely fast destroyer. If you got the engine boost going, you can get this ship up and over 50 knots, which is great for a throttle juking DD. Or if you need a DD to get to a flank very quickly, get on the side and start harassing the enemy team, either in randoms or competitive. This ship is absolutely amazing for that. Or if in competitive, you just need a ship to really just speed over to somewhere, grab the cap. She's great for that as well. This is a fantastic DD for just harassing the enemy team. Will absolutely slaughter most other DDs that she runs into. Especially if you've got a good DD player in, in the Marceau. That, that's a very, very, very scary combination to deal with. Because again, it, it's hard to hit. It takes less damage even when it does get hit. And if you got the French Special Commander too, this is a great ship to run him on as well. And again, this is a coal ship. This is a ship you can get completely for free. Just for coal. Again, same situation with the Mosva. Just make sure you get your coal containers, do your missions, do any coal um, combat missions that you have as well, and you can get the ship quite easy. If you're a fan of destroyers, this is a ship I would strongly recommend for you guys to pick up. All right, before we get down to number one, we have quite a few honorable mentions. It was very hard to narrow this down to what is the best free premium ship that you can get in the game. There's a lot of very good ones, and if the ship that you were thinking might have been number one or might have been on this list isn't on this list. I'm not saying it's a bad ship. 
this is just what I had to try and narrow it down to from so many good ships. So we've got quite a few honorable mentions, so let's go ahead and get going on it. We won't spend too much time on these, but let's go ahead. So first honorable mention, it's the Pomeran. Do I really need to explain that ship? I, I don't know how many videos I've made on the Pomeran saying how good it is. She's a fantastically fun ship, not really made for competitive outside of like tier 9 brawls, but this is just a wonderful ship to play in random battles when you get into those brawling situations. She's pretty much the queen of brawling at tier 9 now. You get um, 12 15 inch guns. She's essentially an FEG with 12 15 inch guns instead of her 8 16 inch guns. She's got torpedoes. She's got basically all the German gimmicks on the ship that you can fit onto a German battleship. She She's just great fun, good derpy ship to play, and one that I would recommend you guys pick up just for the, the immense giggle value that you can have in the Palmer. Third honorable mention is the Paulo Emilio. Um, anyone who's watched my streams, you guys know how much I love this ship. The Paulo Emilio is essentially a torpedo delivery system that you just gun it toward the enemy team, at least the way I do it. Try to sneak around, get back behind the enemy team, find the battleships that aren't paying attention, and you've got three torpedo tubes. These torps do shoot shimikaze levels of damage. You got three sets of them, but only a six kilometer range. But you also get exhaust fuel smoke and an engine boost that both conveniently only last long enough to cover you from your detection range to the assured prox to the assured detection range with your fuel smoke going so yes this is just a yolo dd you yolo torp rush enemy ship she's great at it just it's just buckets of fun from this ship now she has a research bureau ship it is a very steep grind for something that's just a essentially a one trick pony but it's a fun ship all right and finally number one is the tier nine monstrosity abomination the kearsarge the Kearsarge is this surprisingly good hybrid battleship that looked ridiculous when it was first announced, and I guess we should have figured it would have been a really darn good ship. So, what the Kearsarge is, she's a Tier 9 hybrid American battleship, actually designed for the Russians, with 12 16-inch guns, and these are 12 North Carolina 16-inch guns. So, they pack one heck of a punch. In addition to the 12 16-inch guns, you get a flight of Tiny 10 Tim equipped rocket planes. So you have a 33-second reload time on your main battery. I'm sorry, 36-second reload time on your six on your 12 16-inch guns, and you get the rocket planes on top of that. So what you lose in DPM because of the long reload time, you make up for with the rocket planes because every two minutes you get a full flight of these. And again, these are the Tiny Tim rockets pack one hell of a punch and they have a very 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 nice fire starting chance on top of that as well so you can get good consistent damage with the tiny tims on top of your absolutely devastating broadside of 12 16 inch american ap shells now they are again the north carolina's guns so they have absolutely just lethargic shell velocities and arcs as well so you definitely don't want to be sniping in this thing this thing's probably best played from uh, medium range into close the whole surprisingly good against getting absolutely slapped but you have that absolute just giant flight deck on there that's only 16 millimeters thick so anything and their mom can form you there for damage but if you play your cards right be mindful of your surroundings be mindful of your positionings you can you can do fantastically well in the Kira Sarge and again this is a tier 9 ship with 16 I'm sorry uh, 12 16 inch guns yeah, yeah, American AP too. If you if you missed that from earlier, and she's a coal ship. Get the ship again completely for free, for easy over the course of a few months, just collecting your coal containers, and this monstrosity can be yours. All right, guys. So that's my top five, and then some free premium ships. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Which ships would you have included on this list, and what were you looking for? Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. One way to 35,000 subs, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful Monday and have a wonderful Valentine's Day and week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.